That's okay. You hipped the tar out of him, and that was really good that you used your hips to pin him back. So I, I thought you were playing basketball for a minute because you boxed him out. So that was great. Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support of Gun Guy TV. Listen, we're in the middle of an election year. YouTube is censorship city, and it's only going to get worse. So please do check me out on X and Rumble. Neither of those two places censor me at all. I'll also encourage you to check out the Practical Defense Systems gun uh, YouTube channel, and we're also on Rumble over there. That's the company I own, and I put a lot of training videos up there. There is a link in the description. There's a lot of folks who fight for your Second Amendment rights that you may never have heard of. And perhaps Jeff Taverner is one of those. Now, you might listen to his radio show. He's got one up in the Los Angeles and, uh, and Orange County area. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well. But he's also the owner of Gunslinger Auctions, which is a very cool place. I've been to car auctions, but I've never been to a gun auction. And you wouldn't even believe they have those in California. Well... They do, and Rick Travis was kind enough to invite me to meet Jeff and walk around sort of in the back room to see what they've got. Let me show you what I found. Well, this place is cool, and if you don't think it's cool, look at that. How cool is that? Rick Travis invites me to the nicest places. Jeff, it's good to see you, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. By the way, this is the super secret lair. <laughs> of gunslinger auctions right here you can tell it's super secret because you could you could actually hear the generator working outside to provide the power this place is so <laughs> off grid we had to go down into a deep dark hole and then come in this place secret location you're never going to find it in fact the cia has tried to find it never many times and failed this is all bs isn't it <laughs> a little bit <laughs> That's okay. Okay, give us the tour. What's what's cool in here? Because um, well, Rick was kind enough to invite me. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. This is... Uh, we're just starting to put stuff out. The two middle racks are stuff coming up for May auction. That one is a for sale auction. This is still stuff from February auction that we've sold. We're just waiting for people to pick up. So uh, as you come down, there's all kinds of neat stuff. Winchester 1886. Real nice over and under, SVT-40, uh, Tokarev, you know, everybody needs a BAR. Um, oh, say it louder. Everybody. <laughs> everybody uh, needs everybody a BAR. Everybody needs a BAR. You know, yeah. uh, Japanese takedown rifle. Uh, we've got Winchester 73 with a deluxe uh, custom, oh yeah, custom barrel. How many, how many guns do you sell at an auction typically? Uh, we, about 750 is our norm. At, um, per auction? Yeah, per auction, and, and we get it done because everybody always asks, oh, man, how long do you take? We go at about 150 guns an hour, so it is supercharged. Yeah, now You're in California, so how, mm -hmm. do you sell just to California? Oh, no, we, we send stuff literally from South Africa to Alaska. It goes everywhere you can imagine. I've got customers all over Europe. Uh, uh, long story, but... I don't export, so they have to have their own FFL in the United States. We send to them. They do the exporting. But uh, uh, we send stuff up to Alaska. Uh, the only place I think I've never sent to, of all places, is Hawaii. Yeah, I've had That kind of makes sense. Yeah, they're very strict there. Very strict. I, I've had people call and ask, will we do this to do that, and so on. And it's like, no, we don't have time. Does Hawaii even allow a gun? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Very tiny, comes in a little package, no one knows about it. Yeah, can't actually shoot. I yeah. guess the BAR is not going to Hawaii, is that what you're saying? Probably not. In fact, these things are so popular, and believe it or not, it's California compliant. So Wait, wait, wait what? Wait, what? Yeah, you can <laughs> yeah, have exactly. it. What does that it's mean? It's a semi-auto rifle, but there's no pistol grip, there's no thumb hole stock, there's no flash hider. Uh, it does have a detachable magazine, but it doesn't have any of the other offending members so it is okay to sell in california and i have uh, a few friends that have all told me that they're not leaving without it so this should be a fun day now yeah. you thought i was making up the fact that the generator's there right did you see the lights flicker when the generator yeah again? well they're doing some work on the parking lot they're they're just don't let the them parking be lot. <laughs> yeah that's all 
uh, over here. All right, I'm following uh, him through the find it. through the tube here. This is some of the specialty firearms. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh. I gotta hold that. Okay. I'm, I'm turning the camera over to the camera guy. Oh my oh. gosh! That's huge. Yeah. What that is is. You know, I'm an old man. You handed this thing. What does it weigh? Uh, it's about 22 pounds. <laughs> That's a Holland and Holland eight bore paradox. So it's a side by side that will shoot an eight gauge shot shell or an eight bore slug. An eight bore slug, which is slug. literally the same diameter as an American quarter. So you have to both be large enough to hold it and tough enough to be willing to press the trigger. The tough enough, yeah. I ain't. <laughs> yeah, me either. It was nice holding it. Yeah. But I, uh, I don't need a hospital stay, so I'm me, not pressing You'd the have trigger. to have two people holding me in, <laughs> right. from behind. Yeah. In order I need to, to add another 100 it. pounds to my weight before I can do that, I think. And uh, this guy here, this is another Holland and Holland. Uh, that's in 465 Holland that's and Holland. That's beautiful. Look yeah. at that. This was, this was with a Swarovski wow. scope. Oh, um, wow. Absolutely gorgeous gun, and this sold for sixty-five thousand. So, wait, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> wait, hold up. Yes. Sixty-five thousand. Thousand. Yep. Dollars. This is not. Yeah, I lost the bid early on, and now. I think my wallet just had. You <laughs> lost the bid early on. I bet you did. I think my wallet just had a heart attack. But that's beautiful. This is a Colt Lightning, not overly rare, uh, pre uh, eighteen ninety-eight. Uh, but what makes this one unusual is San Francisco Police Department yeah. ordered 401 of these. And okay. how you know is SFP 271. Oh, good grief. Okay. Yeah, so why, why would the San Francisco Police Department? I have no idea because these things don't work with the darn. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Trying to keep it a family-friendly show. You bet. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes uh, it takes effort. I it, get it. Yeah. And I... And what is your criteria for, say somebody's just, they've got a collection and maybe they got 30, 40 guns or 20 guns or something, they're just getting to the point where they don't want to deal with them anymore. They're getting old like me. It happens all the time where uh, dad passes and, you know, guns aren't what they were at one time where, you know, guaranteed son's going to get them. Nowadays, uh, we get calls all the time, you know, my dad just passed and I've got the guy coming in tomorrow, his dad uh, passed away. He has 45 guns. He has no idea what to do with them. Bring them in. We'll get them sold for you. So is it is it wiser for somebody that's got that situation to, to bring them to you, or should they take them? I, I run into a lot of people that take them to the gun store, drop them off for unconsignment. Well, the, the problem, that way. problem with that, because we can do that here too, but here's what's going to happen. Your best stuff's going to get cherry-picked. Boom, boom, boom. And then you're going to be left with the stuff that's going to be there for years and years. When you put them through auction, you just get one check. It's all done at the same time, and you never have to worry about it again. Plus, the auction is an as-is, where-is, meaning you bought it. That's the end of it. You know, there is no guarantee, no anything. Right. And so when it's sold, it's gone. So it's not coming back on the owner because something yeah. on the gun doesn't Missing work. Missing firing or they didn't like or, a firing. Yeah, yeah, right. It's something to, to, to that matter. It's an as is where is. Now, if we find something wrong with the gun, we will list it in the description. You know, missing firing pin or this, that, and the other. Uh, but for the most part, <laughs> for the most part, <laughs> uh, you know, we, you need we a will, new generator. Oh man, well that was that's hilarious. Uh, anyway, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Well, it's, it'll work. Yeah. So okay, pay no attention. To the noise outside. Behind now, immediately, curtain. everybody's forgotten about the noise outside. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they call me an influencer, right? Right. That, why <laughs> that, that? How that works? So, th that's the story on that. We we get anywhere from uh, the the you know one and two guns to the, the biggest collection. I think was fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred. They came with a semi truck. Oh, jeez. Full of boxes, and I'm talking big, like moving boxes, full of firearms. Okay, now the big question. This is the front room. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to see the rest oh, of the room? Are other rooms? Okay, well, Rick, we're going for a walk. Okay. Here we go. I got it. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Now I've got the front room. I stole the camera from Rick. I'm going to give it back to him. Come on, Rick. I'm coming. Yeah, uh -huh, I know. I see you over there. So oh, this is cool. Yeah, this is uh, this is our... Uh, well, 
I think December auction because we're just about done getting everything in for uh, September. So December auction, all of this stuff will be going up. We just got this one in. I love this gun. This is a, a Springfield 1922. You know the O3. Everybody knows the O3 and the yeah, O3A3. Yeah. Well, they actually made these in 22 caliber. Oh, that is le legitimately. Yeah, a it's an actual 22. There's the mag, and just this one is a just choice condition. It it's looks a, like it's brand new. Yeah, fairly low number, and I've got a collection of these. Otherwise, I I you scoop it up yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got about 15 of them, and and so I don't need 16. So we're going to let this guy go through, but I mean, it's got a beautiful cartouche in the wood. The wood is just absolutely gorgeous. And this stock alone is probably 1200 bucks. So wow. it did was... That, did that come from somebody's collection? It sure did. And this one at one point had the old u Nurdle, the great big long u Nurdle scope on it. Somebody's unfortunately taken that off, but it's still got the original rear sight and front sight. So that's good enough. Uh, that Unertal scope, somebody probably found out you can get 1500 bucks for those. Just for the scope. Just for the scope, oh yeah. My goodness. How long have you been doing this? 26 <laughs> years now. Man, 26 years. So I opened up June 1st, 1998. You were 13 at the time. No, I was in my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> just checking. And, yeah, and, and uh, uh, you know, I was a touring musician for ever, and friend of mine and I were talking one day and I was I could see the music was coming to an end for me because I was just getting too old for it and and he told me that during the Great Depression one of the few businesses that did not suffer was the firearms industry so I started buying guns and having OCD I ended up with about 250 in six months and I thought you know maybe I should look in opening <laughs> a gun right. store yeah. and it took me about a year and a half because the the, the, your very first FFL takes forever. And uh, I found a little location in Glendora and the guy was willing to work with me. I told him it's gonna take me a while to get these licenses and I signed a lease with him in October of 97 and we opened up June 1st, 1998 and I sold a gun the very first day. Very cool. And four days later, the guy got denied. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. So, so you've got now, have these all been sold or are these No, ready these to are going to be coming up. Uh, the, the, this is all stuff that will be going in December auction. And this is just the start of it. We'll have 750 by the time we're done. But both those safes are full of stuff. And we've got all this stuff back here on the racks that's going to go and all this stuff back here. So we've probably, uh, like I said, we try and go about 750 guns per auction. We've probably, uh, for December auction, because that's two auctions, or three auctions away, We've already got about 350. So how, how often do you do? Uh, I do it May or I'm sorry, February, May, September, and December. Now, is there a, do they have does somebody have to travel here? I mean, do you have to actually be here. To no, do that you, uh, you, uh, you can go on proxy bid. Uh, you can do phone bids with us, or you can do sealed bids with us. You know, you just call us, and we'll take all your info down, and say lot 15. I you know I'll go to 800 dollars, and we don't start at your high bid we start wherever the internet left off and if it left off at 400 you're the next bid and if it stops there it stops there okay so you'll throw them up on like gunbroker or something like that and there's an internet thing uh, no one? i use a couple of companies called uh, proxy bid is is the main one they're the big big dog in the in the united states as far as online and they will be going simulcasting along with me so you know all right here we are lot 45 a smith and wesson model 19 Da, 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 da. All right, here we go. Two hundred now. Two to quarter. Got to be half. Seventy-five. Seventy-five. Yes. No. We got to go. Oh, internet. Three hundred now. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Anybody? Three? So I guess one one question I have is, what's the criteria that you use? I mean, what? When do you decide I'll take this gun? We'll go ahead and try to sell this one, or we won't try to sell it based upon what it is. Uh, it really it depends on the firearm. Uh, I try the the ones that are really poor condition, you know, that aren't going to get any money. I, I don't want to sell those because they take up a lot of time because every gun that we take in will get a complete description and anywhere from 10 to 20 pictures and I don't want to take 20 pictures of a rusty single shot Kmart 22 22 <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah you're trying to make a living here yeah so yeah. you know this stuff I mean you got a Winchester 97 you've got an Ithaca model 37 with a short barrel uh, you know this is all really cool this is a, a, a coach gun pre-1898 that's marked uh, 
uh, Wells Fargo on it. So I, we well, got a lot of really cool stuff. Of course, at the infield. I'm going to hand. It, may I? May I hold of the course. coach gun? Mm -hmm. He says, "Of course." It's always nice to ask because <laughs> otherwise you get your hand slapped, like when you're a little kid and your grandma gets you. Okay, this this is like. Why do I feel like I should be wearing a cowboy hat at mm. this point? This is cool, and this is actually from when? Uh, that one is about 1884. 1884. I love this. Yeah. That's very cool. But I like it, it because this guy was left-handed. Because yeah, he, you wouldn't put that. The, uh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, okay. I'm a lefty, so, so. Oh, you're a lefty. Okay. Yeah. So this is where ah, I get that helps you grip the gun. Mm -hmm. Now is this is this what breaks that, the action yeah, open that's, here? Yeah, that's your opener. Uh huh. <laughs> Incredibly cool. How incredibly cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a Winchester 1890. This one is in, uh, this is a 22 long rifle, so one of the best ones for shooting. I, I feel like you should have white gloves or something. Yeah. Which, which brings up a question, do you sell the museums at all? Oh, all the time, yeah. The, uh, several museums are on our uh, mailing list. So the Cody one is th probably the w most well known. But uh, we've sold to several different. There's a couple of museums around the Cody that we've sold to also, and then the uh, New Jersey Maritime Museum. I've sold stuff to them. How often do they outbid each other? One, one uh, fairly one regular. It, it's kind of frustrating because they're trying to get it and they don't get yeah. it because somebody else gets it. I always love it when people bid, bid higher. Yeah. yeah, auctions are fun because there's always this sort of you got the patter down, mm -hmm. right? And there's always this sort of excitement going on. I've I've attended the car auction a couple times for this mm -hmm. or that, and I've watched people, they actually will go higher than they wanted to go just because they're so excited about it. It, it happens all the time. Guys get, you know, their ego involved, and uh, we had a uh, Walther PP post-war in the box. We estimated it between six and $800, and at $4,500, one guy. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, oh, we we had two guys, and I just kept going. You know, I, I, I we started it at four hundred, I think. All right, we got four hundred now. Four hundred, four hundred, we got a half, five hundred, five and a half, five and a half, six hundred now, six and a half, and it just kept going. And, and the whole every time they bid, the whole crowd would go yay, and these guys just got into it and wouldn't stop. <laughs> and finally, we stopped at forty five hundred bucks on a six hundred dollar gun. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I, I'm not going to say alcohol was involved, but <laughs> but alcohol was involved. <laughs> Probably so, you know. That's hilarious. Alcohol and ego, two things that uh, auctioneers love. Jeff, thank you very much for the time. I appreciate it. Will you come on the show sometime and talk about this? Absolutely. I'd love to have you. That'd be great. Thank you, Rick, very much for inviting me. Wait a minute. Sounds like a B-29 is about ready to land on the roof. Well, what are you going to do? Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching the entire video. I'm super grateful for you. I really do appreciate it. I want to remind you, again, please do follow me in the alternative places where I won't get deleted like I might on YouTube. And I do urge you to listen to Jeff's show if you happen to get an opportunity. I'll put a link to his website in the description. If you scroll down on it a little bit, you'll find links to his radio show. And check out Gunslinger Auctions. Certainly, if you have a bunch of guns to sell, help out Jeff and let him have the business. He'll actually sell them for more, I suspect, than you would get if you did it on consignment. He'll get it done easier for you. And uh, and at the same time, it supports a man that I, I do consider a hero of the Second Amendment here in California. Thank you again for all of your support. Have a wonderful week, and wherever you go, whatever you do, stay safe. <laughs>